know, shorts that night, uh, flip flops. If you um, if you want to come dressed up as a shark or like a surfboard, or if you um, if you want to dress up as um, somebody. No, not Joe. Um, if you want to dress up as, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, like uh, the Gilligan's Island, you know, if you want to be Gilligan or uh, the skipper or um, uh, the the rich man and, and his wife, if you have a if you if you have somebody that wants, you know, if you guys come dressed up, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going, you know, um, you can bring a beach ball. You can, you know, you can just really just wear a t-shirt and a short and be be like beach night. So, um, but anyway, that's what we'll be doing this Wednesday night is beach night, and then, and then, then this is awesome. Um, in one week, in one week from this Wednesday, it is superhero night. And so you guys will have an opportunity to dress as superheroes and superhero night is going to be a little bit different. Um, we are, you are going to come and you are going to be up here, donate cans. Then we're going to go downstairs. And, and the final of this is because what we're doing for, uh, what we're doing for, um, uh, superhero night is we are going to help help with the kids carnival that's happening that night the awana uh, fall festival that's happening so this is how you're going to be you're this is how you're going to earn points you're going to earn points for serving but in order for that to, for order for you to get the thousand points for serving or i might even make it like four thousand points for serving because this is a big deal is that like you know you can't be hanging out in the corner sitting there doing nothing you got to be hands-on you got to be active you got to be excitable you got to really kind of help out wherever it is that you can help out okay so you will earn points for doing that. You will earn points if your entire squad dresses up. You will earn bonus points because it's superhero night. If your entire squad dresses up as like a superhero team, whether you're Batmans and Robins, whether you're Justice League, whether you're Avengers, whether you're Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, whether you're Captain Planet, like all the people from Captain Planet, whether you guys are the Autobots or you're just, you know, I don't know why you'd be Decepticons. Or if you're like characters from Lilo and Stitch, Paw Patrol, um, Bluey, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, whatever. You, Teen Titans Go, if you want to be like the characters from Teen Titans Go, uh, Ninjago, or, you know, or the Ghostbusters, or, or whoever, or Star Wars, or, you know, whoever that is, okay? Um, no, no, not Naruto. Naruto's lame. Um, so, but I'm just saying, if you dress up, I said it, that's right. I said it. So, so is, uh, so is Avatar. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, dress up. If you guys dress up as like a theme for a superhero, for superheroes, you're going to get bonus points for that. You're going to get bonus points for dressing out. You're going to get bonus points for cans. It is a big night. So, just because you think that, oh man, what a massive lead that that the Nokia's have now, don't think that it means that you are out, okay? It is still anybody's game. And of course, on that night, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this now, on that night, you bring cans, they will not be worth 1,000 points. They'll be worth 2,000 points on that night. So you want to make sure you bring cans because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be feeding up to 25 families at Thanksgiving and at Christmas. And so I want to encourage you guys, I want to challenge you guys, please don't make your parents go broke. We don't want broke parents, you know, we don't want that, okay? But want you to give cans, want you to give non-perishable items, want you to dress up, go fight, win in the winning squad on that first Wednesday in November, you will have Amigo Locos. You'll have one of these booths that'll be just set aside for your squad. It'll be dressed out. It'll be looking really cool, really awesome. And you guys will get to sit there and enjoy Amigo Locos, your squad and only your squad. And maybe your parent that helped you get to that. So, you know, because we got to show love to parents. So, um, uh, we'll... I'm sure we can find somebody that would help you that would be like, oh, yeah, I'll be glad to, you know, so there. But anyway, but maybe I'll get your mom something different if she can't eat Amigo Loco. So, but anyway, so, uh, so that's what we have for that. Fear Factor. Fear Factor is October 30th. Yes. Yes. Um, well, that's going to be up to your squad because you could do that and, 
I'd be like, no. And because like, if Noah pulled something like that, it would have to be like a superhero shirt that looks like it's the muscles of the superhero with the cape in the back. You know what I'm saying? It's gotta be one of those shirts so, or it's gotta be like an actual, like it could be a logo, but he's got to, you know, that sort of thing. But so, um, so you gotta do that. So, uh, fear factor is October 30th. It is going to start at seven o'clock. We are going to have pizza and, uh, we are, we are, um, we're going to have pizza. Uh, we'll have, uh, and this is what I want to, I want to want you guys to do. We talked about it and I think this would be great if you guys did this. I want you guys to bring a shareable treat, whatever that is. We'll have candy and stuff, but if you want to bring brownies, you can bring brownies. If you want to bring cookies, bring cookies. If you want to bring, um, if you want to bring like, uh, just some, some, if you want to bring out like your favorite pie or your favorite cake or some sort of pumpkin spice thing that you just think it's awesome. Just no pumpkin spice spam, please. But something like that, if you want, whatever it is, but you bring something shareable. Okay. Whether, whatever it is. Yes, ma'am. October 30th fear factor. Um, so, and it could be like, you could just go buy some, buy some package of Oreos and bring that or, uh, box of little Debbie's or something like that. And so, but I want to, I want to encourage you bring something. Like I said, we'll have snacks here. We'll have treats here. There will be, and I realize that some of you are like, but I want to go, you, know, you might be like, I want to go trick or treat. guess what? I'm, you're going to get a ton of candy from me. Okay. Any sort of candy that you're going to get out there, you're going to get here. I promise you that. Okay. We're going to play games. We're going to have challenges. We're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. We're going to have, by the way, a costume contest. Okay. Yes, a costume contest. Yes. Um, and what we're going to do is um, what we're going to do is you're going to get uh, you're going to have a chance to to win. And it's going to be based upon we talked. Chris and I talked about it. We're going to be based upon we kind of got a little bit creative, like, you know, the like. Um, and I think if, is, is that Crystal that just joined us on Zoom? Yeah. Hey, Crystal, tell remind me what we said earlier. Um, about like the costume contest we talked about the, the different ideas that you were talking about yeah. and we were like yeah that ought to work would be like uh most original costume most original costume something okay. creative um creative. cheapest the cheapest, cheapest. Costume. okay okay <laughs> the so cheapest costume even more and, creativity make it work with what you got right and then, and then um, the last one was your your term, which reminded me best of a, in show. Yeah, yeah. best in show. Like the best, of an ad like the, or yeah, the all the, the yeah. cool like the one you you dress at your overall like cosplay sort of thing. Yeah. So, but I mean, you could be you know. So there's going to be different categories that you can win. You could be like the most the most creative, and you could be the most like your costume could be like the cheapest. Like you could put like circles, like construction paper circles on your shirt and go as three hole punch whoever okay or you could just you could you could just be like you know have a name tag and say hi my name is dave and though your name is bill uh you could be like you just walk around like this and be like look i'm a little teapot and just say what and, you know you'd be like what do you mean and you, well here's my handle here's my spouse and if somebody pours you over you, you know you just do that go like that i mean Seriously, it's all creative. It's all about being creative. However creative you want to be. Yes, Emery. Okay, on um, Fear Factor, are we going to be scared? Like, is someone going to try and scare us? No, listen, listen, listen. Listen, <laughs> jump scares. <laughs> jump scares are fun, but no, yes, they are. No, but listen, listen. We are, I mean, I'm, well, you know, it's okay. Uh, but it's not going to be anything that you're going to like have nightmares about. I mean, come on, come on. I'm not going to do that. But we're going to, you know, I'm going to test your limits. And, you know, I'm going to see if fear is a factor for you. So uh, we'll play games. We'll play games in the dark. We'll be, we'll, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be so much fun. I promise you, it'll be a lot of fun. Don't say it. I'm not coming. Like I said, the last time you said that, nobody wants to hear that. The game um, in the dark is like a fun, silly game that my boys, like my younger boys like. So it, exactly. that's not anything I can't scary. tell you It'll what it is, fun. but that's what I'm talking about when we play games in the dark. I mean, I promise you, this is going to be a great night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, Noah. It's going to start at 7 o'clock is when it's going to start. We're going to start at 7 o'clock. And so even if like, you know, I don't know if like your neighborhood or whatever is wanting to do trick-or-treating, you can still go do trick-or-treating, get that done, and then come over here, get more candy and stuff like that. Yes. For one of the games on Fear Factor, can we play that game where we 
go all the way if you're almost in the end of the maze, you get jump scared? No, we won't be playing that game. No, uh, -uh. Um, but we'll be playing other games that are gonna, I promise you, it's gonna be, it's gonna be so much fun. I've done this before, it, it is, it is such a blast. So, you do not want to miss it. So, all right, that's all we got for those. Fear Factor October 30th starts at seven o'clock. Squad Wars going on. And uh, those that are out of school, come talk to me afterwards. Of course, here it is thousand points per can, thousand points if your squad wins the game, thousand points if your whole squad does the theme nights, bonus points for creativity, of course. So, and, uh, and so we've done that. Well done, well done tonight. So, here we go. Let's play a game. We're talking about heroes and so it wouldn't be a game without playing a hero game so here we go name that superhero superhero you're gonna see just the hair of a hero and it is going to be all right so um so it'll just need i just need one representative from each squad to stand up and come up here one representative from each squad to stand up and come here. One representative. So if you're the only one in your squad, you've got to come up here. If you're only one in your squad, you have to come up here. So, all right. You're going to be shown a picture of a superhero with a clue to their identity. You have to guess who it is based upon the clue. And the clue in the picture will be the superhero's hair. That's all I can say. So... And the way, what you're going to have to do is when you know it, you got to turn around and say, Excelsior. Excelsior. That's what Stanley would say all the time. Excelsior. Excelsior. You got to turn around and say, Excelsior. So turn around and say it. Let's practice it. One, two, three. Excelsior. Excelsior. Very good. Excelsior. All right. Who just joined us? What's up, Doug? Hello, Doug. All right, so here we go. Here is the first one. Here is the first one. Like, here's an example. What is the example? Who is that? We don't know who this is. I do, though. Who? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, yes. No, it's not. This guy's a legend. He is a legend in this particular field. Uh, <laughs> All right, so the answer, the answer is Doug Fields. He is youth minister extraordinaire, an awesome guy. Okay. Uh, I have known him for years. He's a super cool guy. Him. So here we go. <laughs> he is a superhero to youth pastors. All right, here, here we go. First one, name that superhero. Here it is right here. Who is it? I heard Noah. Is it Wolverine? It is Wolverine. All right, very good. All right, next one. Who is it? Spider-Man. Is it Spider-Man? Nope, it is not. Excelsior. Who? Is it Doctor Strange? Oh my goodness. Is it Bruce Banner? No. He's just now started. Here, I, I can't remember the answer to this. Let me look and see. Let me see. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, where is she? Yes, it is Batman. Very good. The next clue was we just saw him last week in our first week on the Heroes. All right, here's the next one right here. Who? Nope. No, it's not. It is not Clark Kent. DC, DC. I'm gonna tell you, you're super close. I said DC, DC. Uh, Who? Nope. Who? No. <laughs> what? Na 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 na. If you don't oh, it's all here. She pointed at me. Who said it? He said it. He said it. It's Which Superman. Is Very good point. Man. Nope. Nope. Clark Kent's not the superhero. Superman is. But you got the point. Good job. Next one. Here we go. 
Who's that? Black Panther. Yes, it is Black Panther. Well done. Well done. All right, next one. Who? No. Oh my gosh. Go. Go. Is it Wonder Woman? Finally, you were deep. Yes, it is Wonder Woman. <laughs> Aquaman. Aquaman. It's Aquaman. All right, next one. Emery. Captain America. Well, is it Captain America? Very good. Very good. Very good. Oh, well, sorry. All right, here we go. Next one. No. Bro. Yes, it is Iron Man. It is Iron Man. All right, so before we go to the next one, Ethan, how many points do you have? Two points. Allison, how many points do you have? Yes, there you go. You got two points. Noah, he's got four. You got four, Noah. Keep track of them. Keep track of them. All right, next one. Go. Noah. No. No, it is not Venom. He says... I can give you a hint. He he uh, uh, he is uh, uh, looked at as. Hey, you can't help your squad. I'm not even doing anything. Uh, he is. Uh, yes. No, it's not Green Arrow. Uh, he is. I'll give you a hint. He's Marvel. Okay. And uh, who said it first that time? I thought I heard Ethan say. It. Go ahead. Nope. Nope. Allison, what do you think? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Yes? Yes, it is Thor. It is Thor. I was going to say, you're a bad friend. All right, good job, Thor. That's like five for Noah now. All right, next one. Next one. Here we go. Judges. Black Widow. Is it Black Widow? Correct. Correct. Very good. All right. Next one. Excelsior. No. <laughs> Emery. Huh? Doctor Strange. It is correct. Good job. Good job. <laughs> but not this time. All right. Next one. Next one. Noah. Which one? Which one? Hulk. Hulk. Correct. It's Hulk. There you go. All right. So let's see. All right. Uh, Ethan, how, hey, Ethan, how many does your squad have? Two? Three? Allison, y'all got zero. All right. Emery, how many got? Three. Noah, uh, how many does your squad have? Six. Six. The winner of this game is noah's squad well done noah but we do have a bonus one go ahead and show it up there what is the bonus one right there go ahead show it. ethan is it spider-man yes yes it is spider-man yep <laughs> very good very good playing name that superhero all right, good I'm job, good job. That I All right. All right, no, uh, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, skip the next two, go ahead and skip the next two songs. Um, so we're talking about heroes, right? And um, last week I showed you guys like, you know, our youth committee there because they're awesome and they're amazing. And so, but I have one more, I think this is it. I have one more youth committee hero. I need to show you and just don't say anything. Don't say anything and ruin it for everybody else. Don't say anything. We are going to show you who it is. And, um, I did promise it last week, but I just want to show you, see if you can remember who it is. Show this youth committee member. Or member, I should say, right there. Who is that? That is Miss Christy Palmer, right there, right there. It's at the pond by that. 
Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Way back in the day, way back in the day. When was that picture? Was that 96? 96. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You're old. <laughs> You're old. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, I graduated in 97, but you're a day older than me. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. And you know, all right, I think what we should do, I think what we should do, I think we should challenge you guys now to find a picture of your parents from the 90s. I got you. Guys. Okay. I got my dad. And, got my dad. and, and, and I, if you can do that and text it to me, we oh, might play please. next week. Oh, who you is dad. your, who is this amazing parent hero? So, now, if your parent is on the youth committee, it really kind of doesn't count because they've already, we've already seen their pictures and shown their pictures. So do what? It has to be a different picture. Yes, it has to be a different picture. So, All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You already you sent me one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's awesome. No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, let's talk for a minute. Uh, in, in, uh, Will, will you go ahead and shut that door real quick? Um, I'm glad that y'all are here tonight. I was kind of like wondering like how, how's it work tonight, you know, because this is not a normal night for us to do like our Wednesday night stuff up here normally. Um, but I'm glad you guys are here. We started last week. We've been talking about what does it mean to be a hero? How is it that we as believers, who can we look at for heroes in our lives? And, and especially how is Christ like a hero to us? And last week we talked about like how heroes, they're not prideful, right? I showed you a clip from, um, I showed you a clip from, from uh, Batman about how like he thinks that he didn't, he didn't have any limits. And so what crept in his life was pride. And we talked about how if we live a life that honors God and not us, that we not only avoid pride, but we learn to really glorify God's name in the process and in the, in the, for the things that only he can do. Um, and that how when that when it comes to matters of our walk with Christ, that we need to check our pride at the door, that it's not about us. It's all about it's all about him. And so in, in order for that to really kind of be first and foremost in life, it means we got to acknowledge our limits. We got to realize that that without God in our life, that we are really that we're not as great as what we think we are. And I want to kind of spend tonight spending time talking about this particular emotion that I think we don't really know how to really deal with it correctly. Um, and, it's, and it's about anger. It's about anger. Now, I want to ask you this. And raise your hand if this is true with you. Have you ever gotten angry? Raise your hand if you've ever gotten angry. Like you got angry at your mom or your dad or, you know, your brother, your sister. You got, you got angry at, at the cat or the dog or whatever. Have you ever gotten angry? Okay. Like you had a bad day at school. You know, your teacher irritated the fire out of you. You just had a bad day. Okay. Well, okay. Or put your, have you ever gotten angry about like the right reasons? Like you, like there are things that you saw that you knew were not right, that they, you knew that they were not okay. And it really made you angry. All right. That's good. All right. Let me ask you this. Have you ever gotten angry about the wrong reasons? Like you got angry about the wrong things. Maybe you got angry because you got caught or you got angry because you got a bad grade or you got angry because, you know, of something like that. Have you ever been angry like that? Like you felt like you got wronged and that just really made you mad. Have you ever been hurt by someone who was angry at you for the wrong reasons? Like they were ugly to you. Why? Because they were mad about something. And so they took it out on you. They tore into you. They, they were horrible to you. How does that feel? Let me ask you that. How does that feel? In the moment, bad. In the moment, bad. Have you ever been like, I don't want to have anything to do with that person anymore because I haven't treated them? Does that ever happen to you? Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever hurt someone because you were angry 
and you were angry for the wrong reasons. I'm not talking about like physically punch them, but maybe you did physically punch them because you were so angry at them uh, that you hurt them that way, that you bruised, you know, whatever. Um, but have you ever done, maybe for you, it's you said something or you reacted in such a way or you're mad at somebody and you know, like just how to hurt them. Like, you know how to get them and you said it at the right thing and it just cut them to the core. Do you ever feel good about that? Like maybe in the moment, did you feel good about it? Let me be honest. Did you feel good about it afterwards though? You went and passed and you thought about it. Why is it we do that? Why is it in that moment, like when we're angry at somebody, why is it that like we think that we can just be so ugly and so hateful to someone? Why do we do that? You ever thought about that? Hmm. Is anger wrong, by the way? Can I ask you that? Is it wrong to be angry? A lot of times we tend to lash out in our anger, right? I want to show you about this one particular hero. Here's this one guy, this one hero. And he, as a kid, as a kid, I, I kind of had a little bit of some anger issues. Um, if things didn't go the way that I wanted them to, I would throw a temper tantrum. Like just flat out, you know, like, you know, I mean, and my parents, they didn't let it go. It wasn't like, they're like, oh, look at him. He's throwing a fit. No, my parents were like, oh, you're, you're in trouble so bad. Okay. I mean, you know, I got whooped big time, but I would do that. I would throw, I would get so angry and, and just, you know, and, 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 and as a kid, one of my heroes I love to watch was the Incredible Hope. The Incredible Hulk, as you guys know, when he gets angry that he is, you know, this, I mean, he was awesome to me as a little kid. Um, he was green. Green was my favorite color as a kid. Still is. He was massive. He was super strong. He could like, you know, barrel through walls like, you know, and I was like, man, this dude is legit. He's so cool. And so like, you know, the thing that initially caused him to get angry was the fact that he or the, how he would hulk out was that he would get angry and it, when he is in his alter ego guy by the name of bruce banner and so but i wanted to share something with you tonight that always kind of stood out to me um after i watched this movie i want to i want to show you a little bit of a clip from the movie the avengers the aliens have invaded planet earth and they they're trying to get this weapon called the test rack okay now how many of you have seen the movie the avengers that's probably just about everybody here has okay and 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 they're they're trying to get this weapon called the test rack because uh this guy this evil tyrant named thanos is trying to get it because he wants to destroy the everything he wants you know he's crazy he's a mad tyrant okay he's an insane guy and so he's sending loki which is thor's brother um who like you know thor tries to defend him at one point and and black widow says he like destroyed and killed thousands of people and 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 thor goes well he's adopted and um and so you know and but like he's trying to help him he's trying to rescue him and and uh but at the same time he's realized he's got to be stopped and so he's helping the avengers out he's helping captain america black widow hawkeye iron man all these guys and and they're fighting and they're kind of really struggling to figure out what to do and it's kind of here where our scene takes place. Uh, Christy, do you mind getting the lights? And Will, will you play that video clip, please? I need you to cut it if I think it's not going to work. Seen him until you just stop and kiss him. Thor's right, but how do you deal with these guys? How do we do this? As a team, I have unfinished business with Loki. Yeah, get in line. Loki's going to keep the fight focused on us, and that's what we need. Without the mission, things could run wild. We got Stark up top. He's going to need us. So, oh, 
seems horrible. I've seen worse. Sorry. No, we could use horror words. Stuck. We got it. Banner. Just like you said, I'm telling the suit up. I'm bringing the party to you. I don't see how that's a party. Now might be a really good time for me to get angry. That's my seat. Yeah. I'm always angry. Christy, will you get the lights, please? All right. So, my microphone went dead, so. I love that scene. That's like one of my favorite scenes, movie scenes of all time is, is that movie, is that scene where they all are there and, uh, and, and here, here comes like, <laughs> it's like this massive wave of destruction, yet how does Bruce Banner show up? He shows up on a little like motorcycle, right? And it's like putting and it's just, it's just this amazing scene, right? You know, and then like, uh, um, you know, we could really use some, some, what is it that, that Captain America says? Uh, we could really use some anger right now. And what is it that Bruce says? He says, that's my secret. I'm always angry. That means that when he's Bruce Banner, he's angry. That means that when he's the Hulk, he is angry. But yet he does as best as what he can. Now, he's not perfect, right? In the scene, in the, in the, in the act that happened before that, uh, in the Hulk, it, it, he gets angry because he falls through this thing and, and he's getting angry about how people are treating him. And so he, re, he responds in that. But in this moment, he, re, he starts to realize, and you really get to see throughout the movie, throughout the Avengers movies, the process about how Bruce learned, Bruce and the Hulk, his anger and who he is, kind of learn to kind of exist together but it's in this scene that he says something pretty powerful and that is this it, it, it you know because he says it i'm angry all the time he said he's always angry but yet he chooses to release that anger at the right moment right then and there and he does it for the right reason right because he sees this massive beast that is coming at them. And they have been having a hard time trying to stop these, the, the, they're called the Jatari. And those are massive like tank monsters that are coming at them. And they're like massive space wells. Yeah. And, and they're trying to, you know, and, and they can't, but it's when the Hulk get, when Bruce Banner hulks out, he gets there, arrives at the right time, sees this moment, gets angry for the right reasons because he knows that they've got to stop this invading army. That he, that he says what he says, I'm angry all the time, and he unleashes his anger for the right reason, and that is to help save what's going, help save the, uh, the planet. And it made me think a lot about this. There's, there's this passage in scripture. Now, we don't get like the superhero Hulk out, turn green, giant rage monster moment, but there is this scene in, in, in uh, the Gospels with Jesus. And it's the last week of Jesus's life before he is crucified. And one of the things that he does is he goes into uh, Jerusalem because he's taking part in this festival that they all, that all Jewish males would do. And, uh, and so he's in, he's, in, he's in Jerusalem to celebrate, to worship, and he goes to the temple. And this is where it picks up. It is in Mark chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 15. You can open up your Bibles. You can either look at it on your phone or if you have your physical Bible. But look at Mark chapter 11, beginning in verse 15. This is what it says. And I think it's going to be on the screen. Yeah, it's be on the screen. This is what it says. They came to Jerusalem and he went into the temple and began to throw out those buying and selling. He overturned tables 
uh, the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves and would not permit anyone to carry goods through the temple. He was teaching them, it is not written, my house will be called, or is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. The chief priests and the scribes heard it and started looking for a way to kill him. But they were afraid of him because the crowd, the whole crowd was astonished by his teaching. And whenever evening came, they would go out of the city. So Jesus in this scene, he goes to the temple, right? And he's going to worship, to do the thing that he is called to do. Back then, that area was meant for the Gentiles to come worship. This temple court area that Jesus is turning over the chairs and the tables, this was meant for Gentiles to come into worship. Have you ever been to Little Rock on, uh, on a day when there's the farmer's market? Have you ever been to the river market on a farmer's market day? Anybody ever done that? Logan, you've, been, you've done that. Tell me, Ethan, you've done that. Jerry, you've done that. Is it like a peaceful sort of moment or is it super crazy, super busy? It is super crazy. It is super busy. Back before COVID, you could not walk through, you know, and just, you know, just have the space. So to me, when I think about that, I think about like that must have been something similar to what was happening in that moment. There was so much happening. People were using that area where people are supposed to go worship God. They were using that area as, as a way of travel. And the other thing is this, he, he, the money changers and all this, he, he kicked them out. He threw over the things and he did all these things. Because what was happening, what they found out was happening back then, is that they were overcharging people, massively overcharging people. People that were struggling to make ends meet, they were, they were overcharging them. And the, want to know who else was involved in it? It was the priests, the religious leaders that knew better, that knew that they should. They were allowing that to happen. And so Jesus, he goes and he sees what is happening before him. He goes to this place that is supposed to be worshiping God, his father. and has become nothing more than a market in a way for people to get ripped off and to get mistreated and to get abused upon. And the priest knew about that. How angry would you be if all of a sudden somebody walked into your house and started selling stuff? Like stuff that, stuff that, you know, stuff that was a necessity, like your food, you know? What if like somebody walked into your house and be like, oh, you know, Jacob, I'm going to take your, your chocolate milk and I'm going to sell it to you for $1,000. It'd be kind of weird for somebody, number one, to come into your house to do that, right? But then to overcharge that much for it, right? Would you get angry? Yeah. Well, this is the, this is the thing. What is it that that Jesus says? He calls it what? He calls it my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it is. It's his house, and he sees what hap- what's happening in his, his house, and he says, "You have turned it into a den of thieves." Jesus was angry. He didn't turn into a giant rage monster. He didn't break through walls. He didn't say, Jesus, smash. He didn't do any of that, right? He didn't do, that would be kind of interesting, but we don't have that in scripture, right? So, you know, from what we know, he didn't do that. And yeah, you can, yeah, he turned over tables and he chased people out. The amazing thing is this. He never lost control of his anger. And he directed it at the right things. He directed his anger at the right things. So what does that tell us as believers? Well, as believers, it should tell us that we are to not allow our emotions to control us. Now, there is nothing wrong in being anger, in being angry, excuse me. It's a normal emotion. It's like being happy. It's like being sad. It's like, you know, being, you know, these are normal. It's a normal emotion. There's nothing wrong with being angry. It's okay to be angry. The problem is in how we respond when we are anger, angry. And this is what Ephesians 4.26 says, and I think it's up there on, on the screen. It says this, be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. 
It is in we it, it is when we sin in our anger that our anger becomes a problem. All too often we get caught up in the moment and we lose control. And that's not okay. We can't hide behind things like, you know, things like, well, I just have, you know, anger issues or, well, they, des- they deserved it. They made me do it. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Like when they were angry at somebody and they responded, whether they responded in violence or they responded in, in being ugly and saying horrible things. Did you ever hear them say, well, they deserved it because they did this. Have you ever heard that? Yes. It doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it right. Even in moments when we feel that we are justified in doing what we did in anger because of what someone else did to us, it is not okay. I think a lot of times we get caught up in the moment when we, when we feel like maybe we're being attacked or when we feel like everybody's out to get, out to get us or we just kind of, you know, we don't know what to do. And so we respond in that way. And Ephesians here, it reminds us to direct our response to anger in good and Christ honoring ways. So for you, what does that mean for you? You know, we see this example of Jesus and we'll talk about this in just a minute, but we see this example of Jesus and we see how he responded in his anger in good and right ways. He, he wasn't angry just, you know, because somebody wronged him. He was angry because he saw something wrong that needed to be corrected. If somebody broke into your house, would you be kind to them? No, you would do whatever it took, right? To get them out of your house. Grab the Nerf cut, okay? All right, all right. We can be, but what I'm getting, you know, in those moments, you know, they're, you know, we're not talking about like, you know, does that mean that we let people run over us and we just contain our anger? No. What happens if you shake up a can of soda and you open it? What's going to happen? Why? Because you don't do anything to help dissipate the pressure, right? To help spread the pressure out to where when you open a can, it doesn't blow up. Listen, Ephesians, like I said, reminds us that there are good in Christ-honoring ways that we can handle our anger. And for us, I don't know what that means, but maybe for you, it means you got to figure out a healthy way of just, just kind of blowing off steam. Maybe it means that, that you got to remove yourself from the situation. Maybe it means you got to really, you know, stop and talk to somebody about it. Not, not like your best friend that might want to gossip along with you, but maybe talk to an adult or, or like, it, you know, me you know, your youth pastor or, or, or your, your parents and talk to them and say, I'm really angry about this. Instead of saying things like you always, maybe we need to start saying things like, I feel really angry when you do this to me or when this happens to me. And we remove ourselves from the situation. And, and maybe for you, what you've got to start doing, especially if you're struggling with anger, maybe for you in those moments, you got to pull away and you got to pray. You got to find some space away from people, away from the situation, and just pray and talk to God about it. Talk to God about how you are so angry about this. I got news for you because sometimes I think we, you know, I think we think that like God doesn't want to hear about that. I got news for you. God wants to hear about it. God wants you and me to be in a, that's the thing with a relationship is God wants to, wants to hear everything, all of it, because he loves you. And so God can handle your anger. God can handle your frustration. We can be angry and express how we feel about someone or something that someone did that hurt us. We're called to do that. You see, the Bible didn't say in Ephesians 4, 26 to, to, uh, to don't be angry, it said, what does it say? Be angry and do not sin. It is okay to get angry about stuff. 
It's okay to be angry about how our friend stabbed us in the back. It's okay to be angry about the things that are happening in our family that are not okay. It's okay to be angry about that. It's in how we respond that matters. Like Christ, there are times, though, when we are to act out in our anger, that there are things that we should be angry about. There are things that should really irritate the fire out of us, really make us mad, really make us angry. Things like that we know are wrong, things like injustice, things like people being hateful to people, you know, people being mistreated, people being enslaved. Did you know that slavery still exists, that kids everywhere around the world are being sold as slaves? even here in America, even here in Arkansas. We should be mad about things like abortion. We should be mad about things like how there are people that are struggling to make ends meet, that are struggling to feed their family, that are struggling to make it one more day, that are having to live out in the streets because nobody wants to have anything to do with them. We should get angry about the fact that people are professing to be followers of Christ and they are killed for their faith, that they are imprisoned for their faith. There are things that we should be angry about. It should bother us when we see those things happen. There are people who are being hurt, they're being mistreated, that they're being oppressed. Those things that we know shouldn't happen. Those are the things that we should be angry about. Those are the things that, that we, should, we should be angry and express our anger in healthy ways, just like Christ did. And that we as believers should be when people do things wrong to us, because it's going to happen if it hasn't happened yet, it's going to happen. People are going to be ugly to you. People are going to be hateful to you. People are going to say things to you just simply to make you mad. They're going to say things to you simply because they want to see what happened. They're probably even like people like right now that they know the things that they can say to you to get you angry. Because they know that if they can get you angry, they have some, it's a weird thing. It's like a victory for them. Because the reality of it is, is those people are hurt. And the only thing that they know is to hurt people. Tonight, I want to encourage you to get angry about the about to get angry about about to, to just get angry. It's okay to get angry. It's okay to, to realize that you are angry. It's okay to express that in healthy and Christ honoring ways. And to be angry for the right reasons and in the right way. Not to be ugly or to be hateful, not to express your anger in such a way that you cause pain, hurt, and suffering in somebody else's life, but in a way that you are able to express healthy about how you feel. In a way for you when you are angry because you're, you're angry because you see something happening that you know is not right. Get angry for the right reasons. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for just all that you've done tonight. Thank you for the games. Thank you for just our time together, Father. Thank you for showing us about how you call us to express our emotions in healthy ways. And that, that is no different with our anger, Father. And Lord, sometimes we are, we, we are hurt by people. And, and a lot of times we respond in anger and hurt, Father. But Lord, you taught us tonight to be angry and not to sin, to be angry in Christ-honoring ways. And Father, you taught us tonight as well that there are things that we should be angry about and that we, we should respond in ways that bring honor and glory to you. We should get angry when we see somebody being made fun of at school because they look different, they dress different, they talk different. We should be angry when, when people are, are just making fun of people. We should be angry when, 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 we, when things are happening in this world that are so wrong and so against you. 
Father, help us to be angry for the right reasons and in the right way. And Father, that when we are angry, may we handle that anger in a way that brings honor and glory to you. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Y'all are welcome to hang out as long as you want. Thank you for those joining us. Y'all have a good night.